Everybody knows that planet Earth is probably the most unique planet in the universe, at least to us. Between all the planets scientists have seen before, none of them are as beautiful as planet Earth. None of them have this type of blue, green, and brown. This is why planet Earth is also called the blue planet, because of the oceans that takes up most of it. Something else that makes planet Earth much unique than others is fire. You can't find any other planet we have discovered that has fire on its surface. You might say, what about the volcanoes on Mars? Or the sun itself? The entire thing is made of fire. You have to know, the flames you're seeing on the sun are not fire. This is actually nuclear fusion that makes a sun light up. The lava or magma you're seeing that comes out of volcanoes is not fire either. This is actually molten rock or other elements that went under extreme pressures and temperatures and now they're molten. So it's not really fire. And when you have lava, you do not need oxygen to keep it going. So planet Earth is the only planet we know of that has fire on it. But what is fire anyways? We all know that inside our atmosphere there's oxygen, probably the most important thing in life. But planet Earth didn't always have oxygen in its atmosphere. The first atmosphere that was formed on planet Earth was made up of methane and CO2. About 3.4 billion years ago, that's when life began on Earth. But not the life we all know of. It was actually single cell organisms that lived inside the waters. With the help of sunlight, water, and the carbon dioxide that was available in the atmosphere, these creatures went through photosynthesis. They continued this for 1 billion years, and the more they go through photosynthesis, they basically turn CO2 to oxygen, slowly filling up the atmosphere with this oxygen we all love. The reason it took about a billion years is because a lot of the oxygen in the beginning went inside the soil, especially the iron elements, because most of the iron you find on planet Earth is iron oxide. But let's get back to fire. If fire wants to start, what does it need? Fuel and oxygen. When fire is going, it could produce water vapor and CO2. And it is these types of gases that create this thing we're seeing. The thing we call fire. So the light you're seeing is basically gas burning up. Based on the research scientists have done, even though there was oxygen for a very long time on Earth, that didn't mean there was fire. They say there wasn't fire for about 2 billion years and the reason for that is because there was no fuel. The first plants that grew on land was about 500 million years ago and these were the first fuel for a fire to set up. They were basically the very first things that could be set on fire. Earth's history completely shows this because the oldest ashes we've been able to find goes back to about 470 million years. And they believe these were the very first things that set on fire and fossilized. There are a lot of theories on how this fire started in the beginning, but the strongest argument is that it was lightning, because to this day, lightning could start wildfires. The more we move forward, the more plants grow on land, and the more oxygen they produce to thicken up the atmosphere. The more oxygen you have, the easier the fire will begin and expand. And this gets pretty wild when you get to the supercontinent of Pangaea. You have a whole lot of plants being grown all around this continent. There was also a lot of wildfires on these lands. Scientists believe around that time, the percentage of oxygen in the atmosphere was much higher than today. About 350 million years ago, the percentage of oxygen in the atmosphere was 35%, and right now it's 21%. And it is because of this insane oxygen level that insects like that back in the day used to grow this large, like this giant dragonfly called the Maganera. If insects were this large because of oxygen levels, just imagine what type of fires we would have had. The fire that has 35% oxygen level in the atmosphere is going to be much more violent than today's fire. These wildfires would basically destroy all the trees. And because of 
this happening millions of years on end, it caused these trees to evolve differently, especially to counter wildfires. Like have you ever looked at a pine tree? It has been here for about 150 million years. Pine trees are basically engineered in a way where they don't set on fire very easily. And if they do, the seed in their fruit is very so deep that it's very hard for it to get destroyed. And that means you can't make it go extinct easily. There are different types of pines all around the world, but some of them evolved so differently that they are so strong in a wildfire that they don't even die. Everything will get burnt off, but they're still living, and the ashes that are left because of the other plants give them more life because it has nutrients that that tree can use. When you look at the evolution of pine trees, it is truly amazing compared to other plants. It can counter fire, it counters lack of water, and even if there's a lack of sunshine, it still lives on. About 65 million years ago, when a giant asteroid basically made all the dinosaurs go extinct, these pine trees were also living at that time. Because of this asteroid hitting and a lot of asteroid showers, most of the forests all around the planet caught on fire, and of course, other species also went extinct. There was an ash cloud all around the atmosphere that blocked the suns for many years, and that made even more species go extinct. But just like we said, the pine crows went through all this hell, but they still survived. After this took place, another amazing plant started to hit planet Earth. A very simple plant, but very strong. Grass. Grasslands formed all over the planet, and these plants basically changed the entire ecosystem of every place. Especially in terms of food, because different species can use it. Even though grass gets dry in the summer, but its roots is always alive. And next time, it comes back even stronger. Don't get me started on fire, because that also does not kill it. It also makes it even stronger, because the ash that's left behind basically becomes fertilizer for the grass, and that makes it even better. It is because of this grass that you have different species like wheat and rice. So this shows us that fire came on the planet not to destroy, but to build life. Like for example, when the Homo erectus finally were able to control fire, the speed of their evolution became even faster. One of the most important things is that they were able to cook food, and when you ate cooked meals, that made them more intelligent. And of course, the fire would keep them warm, and it would counter against predators, because most predators are afraid of fire. If you've seen our video about how fire was controlled, it finally allowed ancient humans to finally leave Africa because when you have fire, you don't have to stay in a warm place and you can go more up north. So when you look at the beautiful blue planet that's called Earth, we realize that it's not just the water that makes it unique, the fire also makes it even more unique.